What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming and originally I was going to make this video a, a two topic kind of video but I decided against it, one of them didn't really feel big enough to talk about but it probably will get mentioned at some point in this video to a smaller degree but what I do want to talk about in this is the state of Capcom and what they're what they're doing lately and what they're not doing lately and what it could mean for them especially with stuff like the whole Konami incident going on. So, why do I bring this up anyway? But lately, Capcom have, a, you know, they've they've got plenty of bad publicity from bad stuff and thing. People are people and fans of their their franchises and their characters are just generally not happy. Now, I, I have to say, I've made a few videos before as well where I have praised some of the stuff they do, and I still stick by some of that. Most of it will get mentioned in this video anyway. But it it's just it's worrying looking at the big picture. So I mean, Capcom has been around for ages. They've had you know one hit wonders. They've had some of the big stable franchises. They've got one of the biggest franchises going at the moment, especially when it comes to a certain genre of game. And they've got certain extremely recognizable uh, extremely recognizable characters uh, that they some people consider abuse or just neglect so I mean it's it's true to an extent and they've also had you know all sorts of, of bad issues where they've done shitty business practices which have sort of changed but brought them a shitload of heat in the, in, in the times where it was actually happening anyway but when you look at Capcom nowadays Capcom is really only several very I, I, I say several but several is not really a, an accurate depiction I'd like to say they only have a few very few stable franchises that they really focus on nowadays I mean when you when you think of all the games Capcom has made during you know all the God knows how many years but yeah fair enough they've they've done like I said a minute ago they've done the one hit wonders they've done some other stuff they've had a couple of little little IPs that have just kind of fizzled out and maybe possibly been retired. But when you look at it nowadays, really all Capcom basically is, I mean, you've got Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil is obviously their big one, and a lot of people aren't too happy with that because of of the, the direction it's been going the last couple of games and how, how they've been treating it. But, I mean, you've got... Okay, I, fair enough. I, I already said Resident Evil. So, we've Resident Evil. You also have Street Fighter. Street Fighter is obviously the the big fighter. It's possibly the, the biggest fighting game series in the world. Well, I don't know why I said possibly, but it, I'm 99% sure it's the biggest, the biggest uh, fighting game franchise in the world. It's got spawned all sorts of tournaments, all sorts of crazy all across the world things. And that ties in as well as some of, with some of the the stuff that Capcom's been doing wrong. They've made bad decisions, put out bad broken ports and bad broken games. So I mean, it it can go, it can go pretty badly when it when it comes to that kind of stuff. But on the flip side, I I'm gonna quickly jump back to where what I was talking about because I don't want to just leave, leave a point mid sentence, if you will. Uh, they've also got, say, as their their main stable, they still have Monster Hunter going. Monster Hunter is obviously a big series, especially in the East. Like when you're looking at the uh, Japan and Asia, it's it's a monstrous game. Excuse the pun, didn't even mean that. Uh, I'm a big fan of Monster Hunter ever since the the PS2, the PSP, the Wii, the Wii U, the 3DS. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to Monster Hunter Cross. I love Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I got really into Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. And so, I mean, it's it's still one of one of their big series that, that they're actually focusing on. And they, they also have stuff like Mega Man. Now, Mega Man, most people will say, is kind of abused and neglected. That's why I brought that up earlier. So we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute anyway. But also, one of, one of the other actually series that I, I kind of forgot to mention is Devil May Cry now they've they've been doing a decent job with Devil May Cry they haven't really they, there was never a time where it was too fully retired and questioned that 
if we'd ever have new Devil May Cry games. And especially since they, they got Ninja Theory to reboot that and there's going to be the or there already is the remaster. And there's possibly there's talk of a sequel, I know. Again, it could be completely unofficial, but who knows? Or um unconfirmed and it could be bullshit, but who knows? They've also got, say, I mean a couple of if you if you will, like some of their other their other small series and their other, you know, maybe one hit wonders. I mean you've got games like Onamusha. I love Onimusha. At least the ones I've played, I, I liked anyway. I didn't play them all, but I did like the Onimusha games that I did play. And I really do plan on getting back around. It would be interesting to see if they, they did bring them back. They've got the Lost Planet series, which I believe is officially retired after the third game. Yeah, they've got the Dead Rising series. Dead Rising, I'm, I'm a big fan of Dead Rising. Unfortunately, they have gone a little bit downhill over time. Dead Rising 1, fantastic. Dead Rising 2, and off the record, pretty good. Dead Rising 3, enjoyable enough, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Um, but that, that's my point. That's one of their, their other ones. that It's not as big, but they still do have it, and I do see it continuing for the foreseeable future. They also have stuff like Asura's Rat, which I'm pretty sure is just dead in the water at this point. Zack and Wiki... <laughs> Who who knows with with that uh, anymore nowadays? Um, there was another one, Dragon's Dogma. Uh, apparently, that did really well and it was a really good game. And there, it spun a, an MMO, Dragon's Dogma Online, which I have no idea really about. But it it just it shows that with Dragon's Dogma and the the expansion kind of thing for it, because it, it I wouldn't really call it a brand new game, but. It did seem like that they they could have gone further with it, but it just fizzled out on that kind of that kind of front. So I would call it a a one hit wonder almost. There's been a, a few other titles. Remember me, which was panned. Dark Void, which was also panned. So um, a chances are those two games will never see a sequel or never never see a. Uh, being brought back. I mean the the studio behind Remember Me. Um, I think it was dot dot not dot. Dot Nod Studios, I think they had to go to somewhere else because they were about to be closed down or something like that. Uh, there's also some others really worth mentioning. I mean, they've got the Beautiful Joe series, which has basically vanished after a couple. Well, what I thought was two good games and a couple of other games, but uh, they just kind of disappeared. There's also a cult classic that's coming up as well um, and got a HD remaster fairly recently. There's the Ukami game. Uh, that was the, the artwork and the art style in that game is fantastic. I wasn't really that much of a fan of the gameplay, but it's yeah. It, I mean, it's it's a fairly it's a fairly popular uh, game and it, it's got a real real cult following. So much so to the point that it did get a, a remaster. And then you've got a couple of you know just one off other games. You've got something like God Hand, shit like that. So uh, again, I've never played God Hand. I don't know if it's a, if it's a decent game or not, but. Yeah, it's it's just just saying anyway. So, I mean, with all the stuff they have like that, including Mega Man, which is a huge series loved by millions, myself included, and they just treat mistreat and neglect Mega Man and and the series. In fact, I, I think they're only releasing this new um, Legacy Collection with Mega Man One to Six. I think they're only doing that just to spite. The creator of of the Mega Man games, basically, because he's doing his own spiritual successor with um, the Mighty Mighty Number no. Nine, and it's basically a spiritual successor to Mega Man. So I think they're just doing this to kind of just try spite him. So you know, I mean, fuck Capcom if that's the case. But when you look at some of the, some of the other stuff, they ba- because of Shinji Mikami, who obviously does no longer work at Capcom. But, I mean, he basically created survival horror as we know it today. And as we look back on it fondly today. Because, yeah, a lot of survival horror games nowadays aren't really survival horror like we we used to have. So we do look back on on the old ones as as the better games. And the the better quality survival horror story, survival horror experience. And then, it's just, it really really goes to show. And I, I don't really need to talk about Street Fighter because it's just, I mean, it's, basically the number one number one fighting game worldwide so obviously they're they're doing despite some failings in that they're uh, they're doing a, a pretty good job 
when it comes to to all that and and their treatment of street fighter even if they're have like i said they're having some questionable things on it but even with some of the biggest titles and biggest series they have going they still pull shit like on disc dlc charging for shitty updates and just ridiculous things like that doing what you could all basically call anti-consumer tactics i mean i remember i I even made a video actually at, at one point on it when resident evil 5 on steam was finally after years converted over from games for windows live to steamworks and what Capcom had done is Capcom ripped out the code that modders were using to enable local co-op. Why? I mean, it, there was, it wasn't tied into games for Windows Live. They basically lied about it because the guys behind the mods, they literally just said all they had to do was go into the code and it was already there and just changed, I think it was two things, one to say from off to on for co-op, and then the other was something to do with the controls, like uh, one person would be using the keyboard or two people would be using controllers or something like that, I can't remember what it was, but just all sorts of bullshit. Now, yeah, fair enough, they did remedy that, and then you have other situations where they have Resident Evil Revelations 2, they've been throwing in microtransactions to that, now I've I've played Resident Evil Revelations too. I played a, I played a good bit actually, and the microtransactions in it are basically n- negligible. I mean, the only time I've ever even seen them was the first time I looked around, and because I, I wanted to look through all the menus and shit. So other than that, it's never been an issue. I've never been tempted. I I, I even forget they're there all the time because I don't even need to go into that menu anymore. But they all in another another breath of what they're what they're doing wrong and what they're doing poorly is again for Resident Evil Revelations two there was the whole local co op thing you know say oh well it's not it's not possible in on, on the PC version what do modders do within like two days boom they put it in and then Capcom just come out and launch it and just because even though they originally said they couldn't so and all the mismarketing from it originally as well that people had been basically promised it was going to be in and there was no it's it's really complicated that there was there was no um they didn't say it wasn't going to be in or that it was restricted to consoles but it's just it's poor you know poor marketing and poor form on capcom I won't, there's not really much to say about most of their, their other series i mean you've got you got dead rising automusha all that lost planet there's not really too much to say about that, but with how few games Capcom are putting out these days, now I realize Capcom have a shitload of Japanese-only titles, both from existing studios and their, their history, but, I mean, the fact that it seems like all, they're, they're almost going the way of Konami. I, I, I hate to say it because they do have some large, great franchises, but it really feels like they could almost be making a shift. They might put out one or two console games every so often, you know, with, with the, the rate of console game development nowadays. They might put out console games, jeez, I don't know, one or two every one or two years, really. They could obviously alternate different titles and stuff, you know, Monster Hunter, and then throw out a Resident Evil game, and then bring out one or two others, and then throw out another Resident Evil game, or another Monster Hunter game, something like that. Obviously, you've got the issue with all the Street Fighter games in there too, because Street Fighter games are just going to be pumped out basically year after year, with another adjective about how ultra super mega ultra mega 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 man Street Fighter is going to be. And that's... There, there's even more of their issues actually charging for like updates and all for games that should just basically be fucking patches but no they'd rather make an entire new retail copy or an entire new digital download sale of it and then the game turns out broken but i mean capcom also have a huge a huge 
arcade division. Now, they do it in their non-standard arcade games. Obviously, they have arcade games in the sense that, that I know them as, and probably most of you know them as, where, which is, you know, you stand there with arcade, you're sitting there standing there with arcade sticks or your light guns or whatever it is you're doing. And they also have, like, massive amounts of pachinko machines and uh, there's all other types of mobile games and other types of arcade games that uh, I, I won't really go into detail with, otherwise I'll be sitting here for fucking hours talking about them because it's, it's really, for the most part, a Japanese-exclusive franchise kind of thing. And they do huge amounts of sales and huge amount of money over that. And with the, the amount of time, money, and flack they get over the AAA home and mobile console uni- uh, unit of Capcom, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a significant drop in what Capcom were putting out and that they were just focusing on, on the rest of the stuff. Because, like I've said a few times now, the amount of main series that they do focus on and the frequency of those games let alone the quality that some people have an opinion on and some of the anti-consumers practices it's just it's really really disheartening and really really worrying because i mean if if all we're going to see is you know a capcom game or all all we're going to see games wise from capcom is going to be Resident Evil every couple of years, Street Fighter every six months, or a new version every year, or whatever, whatever they do with it. Because I know they usually make the improvements and all, but I, I won't go into that. I've already touched on it a little bit. Monster Hunter, which, we're, we're, to be honest, we're lucky to see outside of, of, of Japan at this point. So I'm happy every time we get one of those. Because usually, they do have a big delay time between when they release in Japan and when they release outside of Japan. So, you know, it, we're lucky to see that at all. And even though the sales numbers are getting better, they're still nothing phenomenal. They're just shipping around a million units per game now outside of Japan, of course. So that's that's pretty handy. And that's even though it's on the open up. Is it enough for Capcom? This is, this is the same studio that sold, like... I think it was 6 million copies of Resident Evil 6 in like the first month or two and considered it a sales failure or maybe it was like four and a half or something like that. So, I mean, this this, this is what I'm saying. I mean, it's every day that goes by and every time I see some Capcom stuff and be it good or bad, it just, it has me worried because the way they, they treat stuff is, is questionable. Not to mention as well a couple of the, the the fact that they're just throwing out remasters left, right, and center. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I do have Resident Evil, um, the Resident Evil GameCube remake, right, in HD. I also have it on the GameCube. That's not the point. I have it on the the PC for the the latest version of it. They're coming out with Resident Evil Zero, which you know Resident Evil Zero HD. Which if you look at the new trailer and the new screenshots it actually does look really good and it looks like they've they've put a lot of uh, a lot more work into it than they did the, the original one but that's that's not the point i mean i i've already played resident evil zero so i'm not i'm not beefing with it for that but i mean it really looks like they're trying to just put in the minimal now i know they're a business and they want to maximize profits but this looks like almost to the point of not putting in the minimum amount of work but in putting in less than the minimum just so they can wind everything down now i'm not saying that's what they're doing but that's that's how it appears to me and it would be as as bad as capcom can make it sometimes and as much shit they they put out and as much shit they do it can be it would be really really upsetting to see capcom either now i don't think they'll disappear because lately they've been more profitable just in general but it would be really really upsetting to see capcom stop making game stop making computer games and only only focus on you know their arcade section or their mobile section now i say mobile section i don't mean like 3ds and ps vita not that anyone plays a ps vita joking i have a ps vita don't fanboy attack me on that one but I, i'm just saying we to see stuff like resident evil just fall from 
where it is. Okay, fair enough. Some people have argued that it's fallen a considerable amount of, of distance as it is. But that's not the point. I mean, just to, to see Resident Evil basically be permanently retired would fucking kill me. Um, to know that there could potentially never be... Or not potentially, but to know there would basically never be no chance of another Onimusha game would kill me. To know that, you know, it's... Uh, you all have your games in that they come out with. God Hand, Ukami, uh, Beautiful Joe, Mega Man, Street Fighter. I mean, it, it, it's horrible to think of. And as much as... As many problems and all the bullshit that they do and come out with, it still would be a great loss to everyone just if, if Capcom just... Again, I won't say disappeared, but if they just stopped making console games, with the exception of maybe, you know, porting Street Fighter over every every year from from the arcade and the latest iteration not just onto a console or something. But that's that's enough for that. I've waxed moronically for a considerable amount of time over than what I wanted to do. But we'll see how that goes anyway. So Thank you for sticking around if you've listened to this entire video. I, again, I realize I talk too much and I ramble sometimes, but it's kind of a memory lane kind of thing. It's a disheartened look back through memory lane and a disheartened look forward at what could potentially be a bleak future. So thank you for watching the video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about Capcom in any way, shape, or form about their business practices, how they're treating certain characters or certain series, what you think they're doing right, what you think they're doing wrong. I want to know all of that in the comment section below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter because I do have a new series that has started up fairly recently and that's up and running on Twitter. Details in the description below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with this extremely long video and thank you for listening to me in general especially you know just overall <laughs> and i will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel